Now, the Okwama community in Ugeli's south local government area of Delta State, where the 16 soldiers were killed, has been raised. Residents of the coastal community of Okwama are said to have fled to neighboring Ugeli for fear of a reprisal by the soldiers who have been patrolling the creeks. It was gathered that the slain military personnel responded to a distress call after the communal crisis between the Okwama and Okoloba communities, both in Delta State, before they were killed on Thursday, March 14th. Meanwhile, as man manhunt for the killers continues, the, with some arrests already made by the soldiers, led by the general officer commanding 6th Division Nigerian Army, that's Major General Jamal Abdul Salam, President Bola Tinubu has granted the military full powers to go after those who killed the 16 soldiers on Thursday, describing the attack as a crime against the Nigerian people. Also, the Nigerian Senate has said it stands resolutely with the defense headquarters and the Nigerian army over the killings of the 16 soldiers in an ambush in Okwama. Joining us now on the show is retired Lieutenant Commander Koku Imanana, an indigen of Odi in Bayelsa State, who witnessed the Odi invasion. He is joined by Dumewi Kachiku, an indigen of Delta State and former presidential candidate of the African Democratic Congress. Good morning and welcome to the morning show. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Well, gentlemen, Good morning. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Well, the narrative has been properly laid out by uh, Vimbai. We just want your reaction. I would like to start with you, uh, Lieutenant Commander Imanana. Uh, apart from being uh, someone from Udi who witnessed this kind of situation in uh, 1999, November 1999, you are also a retired military officer. And then to maybe uh, Kachiku, your view also. But let's start with you, uh, Lieutenant Commander Imanana, retired. Yeah, uh, Dr. Abati, thank you. Actually, it brings about bad memories, this occurrence in uh, Ugeli uh, South. Surprisingly, OG, we suffer the same. That is why I'm, I'm pained to hear this kind of story again 25 years after OD. It was not easy at all because when it happened, the, both the military and also the community suffered for it. The military suffered their own losses, then the OD community, total destruction, nothing spared in the community. So when this thing happened in this Okuama, my mind just went back to what happened to us. And uh, my first advice now is, as it happened to D, this one is also close by. Let it not be the usual pattern. Let them completely obey the command of the Mr. President and Commander-in-Chief. Go after the killers, not everybody in the community. Because in the case, it was the entire community they went after. So this time around, let them go after the killers, and also the community should cooperate with the, the military. If they know them, let them bring them out. In the case of OD, it was only one indigen from OD that participated with the other, the, the other criminals. And we suffered because of one person joining the other boys. We suffered for it. So I am praying that this young man that have put that community into trouble be fished out and let them also pay the, uh, pay the price uh, according to law. That is my advice. And if I must also give advice again, because uh, some people will think it is easy to do this. Federal government should also learn a lesson. The community should also learn a lesson. Because in our own case, we took them to court. At the end of the court, who they won the case. Federal government appealed severally. We won all the appeals. And compensation was granted OD with financial benefits came to OD. 15 billion naira was paid to OD. So suffering from that kind of big loss, the federal government should not make the same mistake by going to that community with that kind of uh, at, uh, destruction and go through the same route. That is my prayer. Well, uh, Dumebi Kachiko, your take. Well, I think uh, it's uh, a sad day for Nigeria. Um, 22 um, lives were lost. Um, I think it takes a lot of impunity to kill Nigerian soldiers and mutilate their bodies the way um, 
It was done in Otwama. Um, this has gone on for too long. We understand that um, the crisis between uh, Okwama and Okolobo has gone on for decades. Um, successive state governments have failed in resolving their issues. Uh, we understand that Okwama is a historical tenant in that area and they've had issues of um, kidnapping, killing, um, raping women, and this has been reported over and over again, and nothing seems to have been done to resolve those issues. We understand what happened in the last two months, and which led to this crisis um, when people, two people were now kidnapped in recent times and killed, and the military in responding to um, an SOS were killed. But beyond that killing, what we now see is a recurring decimal in the atrocities going on in Delta State and parts of Bielsa where a particular individual is known to be killing soldiers and this has gone on for years and now i mean the military seems to be going after him last time i um, i know there was an airstrike um, that didn't kill him now they're going after him in delta and in bielsa and like the retired colonel said uh, what we worry about is uh, innocent lives being lost in this process but government has failed in allowing people like this to continue to metamorphose in society. We see what's happening in Haiti, where gang, gang uh, lords are now taking over the country. And that's how we watch gang lords continue to emerge in Nigeria and take over the civic space and work with politicians to uh, rig elections. And then now are so powerful as to kill Nigerian soldiers and decapitate their bodies. Uh, this is totally un unacceptable. I believe that everything should be done to bring these people to justice. Right. Now, uh, retired Lieutenant Commander, if I may come to you, I'd like to get some clarity about rules of engagement. Because this is not, of course, as you've already lived through something similar, this is not the first time we've seen an instance like this. However, some of the conversation at the moment is about the discrepancy, the different manner in which the military responds to these instances. So you have people saying, well, we've seen instances where men in, in uniform, military men have been killed in Borno, for example, in the northern region of the country. But we haven't seen the response lead, uh, leading to the raising of the communities. So I'd like to get your clarity as to why are there different rules of engagement for different instances of this nature? And what are those parameters that are used to determine whether certain avenues, for example, the raising of a community, what, what's the deciding factor in that? Mumbai, you've just completely covered the whole interview. Definitely that is the problem we have. In the Niger Delta, this kind of reprisal attacks happen mostly in the Niger Delta. And if you look at it, it is not peculiar to us. So selective uh, uh, reprisal attacks that does not go around uh, the whole federal uh, nation, like northeast, northwest, southeast, these killings are going on, as you rightly said. But it doesn't happen that way. But whenever it is in this Niger Delta area, the army will go after the whole entire community. Like now, somebody like me, I'm retired. If I've managed to build a house in Oji, and they came and raised it down because of some youths that are not even the making. And before I even go there, no community in the whole entire nation can sit down together and plan to kill armed uh, military men. Let us kill them. No way. No matter our level of uh, civilization, whether it is good or bad, whether barbaric in any sense, no community will do that. So the rules of engagement that is applicable to this Niger Delta should also be applicable to every other part of the nation if such offenses are being committed. Not select our side. I wanted to even say that, that you have helped me. So that is really the problem we have. It should not be peculiar to only South-South. It should be applied to every other, the same measure that is given to us should be given to every other area. Because the killings in Plateau, if you want to go there, they would have by right now maybe it's only the capital that would have remained if they were following the rules of engagement. So let us try and apply the same rules. And even there are rules of engagement to 25 years after. For me, 
That time was the beginning of this kind of killings. So after 25 years, I'm going by also the experience of what we did with federal government. Federal government too should have by now changed their tactics and apply some kind of humane approach. Go for the target and leave the innocent people that have managed to build their homes uh, and living under that kind of something. Because in OD, after the invasion, so many people died on timely death because they don't have any means of getting back their homes and feeding their family or training their children. So blood pressure ensued and so many people died. That is why I am appealing that the rules of engagement should be reviewed and that's uh, going after the community should stop. Right. I mean, very sad one that, that, that happened there. Uh, with the sacking of this community, I want you just to give us a reminder of what really happened in OD, because that's a wound that will never close. I mean, you witnessed it uh, with a way to also, you know, as regards this case, giving us some probably solutions on how we can solve this interethnic crisis. And I'm sure Dumebi would like to sound off with this because I remember particularly the fight in Wari and how Wari never recovered from that fight, which was across you know, tribal lines also. How can we bring peace back? And I also remember the role, you know, the governor then did play Chief James and Anife Ibori. I mean, how can, you know, uh, Sheriff Oboriwari, you know, pretty much learn from that and we try to bring peace back to this, you know, warring communities? Left on our command of use first, you know, just regale us once again with what, the visual evidence of what happened in Odi then and how we can prevent things like that and yes. how we can solve this inter-tribal clashes and things like that. And afterwards, to maybe we'll take it up from there. Yeah. That, that of OD was not inter-tribal. The OD matter happened because some youths that were used for the election of uh, our leader, blessed memory of uh, uh, Alamesia, we call him Alamko, he was the Governor General of Niger Delta, or Yanagua, or Bayasa. So they used those boys for their elective purposes. After using them, they kept them in a particular area in Yanagua. But after some time, they became nuisance. In the nuisance in the communities, they were doing so many things that were not in, in conformity with the government uh, of the day. So the government decided to raid their environment, and these boys now ran down for safe heaven and went to OD. They went to so many communities, but they were driven out. But when they finally got to OD, one of our indigents was also one of them. So that one accommodated them and kept them. And you know, don't blame the communities. These boys come, they come into the city, your community, with arms. And who is going to challenge them? They were in OD until this kind of peace mission was what police people came to defer. When they came in their numbers, about seven of them came for peace mission. Then these boys uh, arrested them and held them hostages under them, demanding for some ransom. So the, the seven policemen was the beginning of the problem. And peace mission, the minister from BIOD was contracted by the then head of state uh, President of Asanjo, she came, one Kitabu, she came to the, for that peace mission, gave them the monies. After the monies, where are the policemen? Policemen were nowhere to be found. They were killed and buried. Not unlike, unlike these guys in uh, uh, Delta State that dismembered the bodies. These people were buried in a shallow grave. So when they saw that one, the next order that was given by federal government was go after Odi because we cannot afford to keep those kind of communities. So they came in their full force. And these boys, after killing, they did not run away in the case of Odi. They were there waiting for the army. And they confronted them even in the entrance of the army. So the army came with that full annoyance and uh, considering also some of their, they lost some of their troops in that ambush. So they went in with that vigor and brought down. And one, one thing I observe, when they entered Odi, any uh, building with military photograph, the army people destroyed that 
building more than any other building. They even shot some salvos on the pictures of the military people. So, and they know, no military man in his right sense will go back and now cooperate with, they say we are the trainers of those boys. That was the anger. How can a military man, after serving, will go back and train uh, community boys to fight against the state? No, that is not our, in our character. But these guys that came, maybe because of the annoyance, they attack more military people, uh, buildings more than even the civilians. So, so give or take, we are the ones that suffered for it more. So to avoid this kind of things happening, let us decide fully. These killings are becoming far too many in the nation. The killings are too many, and let them also, the military too, whenever they are going, whether you call it peace mission or not, when they are going, go with all the, the instruments that you want to use. This is modern era. You take some techno technology into place. Let somebody provide surveillance around the area. So if, like somebody was saying it on your television yesterday, take some surveillance around the area, and that person will be reporting to the people that are there if there is going to be any attack, instead of being a military being ambushed, you ambush the guys that are coming after you and uh, finish with them because they are coming to attack you. But in every situation we are hearing in Nigeria now, the military is being ambushed by non-state actors. It's becoming shameful. Those of us who served, in our time, no civilian dare you in uniform. But now the times are changing. I, I retired in 1997. The times are changing. I didn't retire recently. But that time we were proud to wear this uniform. So some of the things we are seeing too, we are not happy. Okay. We are not happy okay. that we are seeing okay. this kind of things okay. happening. Okay. Lieutenant Commander, thank, thank you so much for that. Uh, do, do maybe, uh, you cook? I, I just want you to, you know, talk to the, you know, inter-rivalry on ground. How can we settle things like this, the role the state governor can play? Because this has to stop. Yes, um, uh, the, I, I said earlier on that the uh, state governments have failed successively in dealing with this issue because there's always a political undertone to this. Currently, we're talking about two communities, one is one Orobo. Um, in, in times past, you always have uh, people from different communities who have people in various arms of government. And because of that, they protect their kids and kin. And when people are killed, nothing is done. So people become emboldened. Uh, there are several reports, um, several commissions of inquiry over the last, uh, last couple of decades on this same issue. And as long as they are not implemented, as long as people believe it's okay to kill, to maim people and nothing happens to them, then they will continue doing this. Now, earlier on, I alluded to the fact that a, a name, a, they are, um, they, um, uh, some endurance has been alleged to be behind this. But the same person who has been alleged to be behind this, you see him walking in and out of some government houses in the South-South. You see him with full complement of um, uh, escort, fully armed and what have you. So what are we saying? We are saying to these people, it's okay to be this way. Three months after this, all has quietened down and then we move on. The community that has been um, decimated, they are, they are paying their price, suffering in silence. The soldiers who have, um, the families of soldiers um, uh, who have died, they are there suffering in silence. And we continue till this happens again. What must we do now? We must ensure that we have a government that says Nigeria is not a place where human lives are taken and no price is paid. The C in C of this country must be one that says, anytime you touch my military, I will avenge. I will go after you, but not only my military. Any time any Nigerian life is lost, I will ensure that a price is paid. I will go to the very end to ensure that a price is paid, that those people are brought to book. But when we don't bring these people to book, the same thing will happen in other parts of Nigeria. You asked a very interesting question uh, earlier on about, um, about uh, having disparate measures in addressing this. In the north, you don't go after the communities, uh, the, you don't raise the communities, but in the south, the communities seem to be raised. 
I will say, are we actually comparing uh, apples to apples? In the North, if it's a theater of war and soldiers are killed, they understand it's a theater of war and they go after those who, um, who are fighting there in that theater of war. If it's bandits, what typically happens is that the communities are already reporting to the government or to the police to say our community has been overtaken by bandits. This is what is happening here. But what is happening in this place is that the communities harbor these people. These people don't report to the police and say, we have criminal elements in our midst. Come and protect us from these people. The military went on a peacetime mission because two communities were fighting. So when people say they did not go on, they didn't have, they didn't have any recce before they went there and all of that stuff, they went simply to invite these people to settle the matter just like they have been doing for the last couple of decades. They did not realize that that particular community had gone to employ mercenaries to fight their battle. And as such, 22 soldiers were killed. Now, imagine what it takes to kill 22 soldiers with a gunboat. Imagine the amount of armament that these people had. And I bet you, when we start investigating this, when we start delving deep into this, you will find out that these people even had help beyond, uh, had help outside civilian help. You will see that there's more to this. The undertone of black oil dealings and what have you going on there, and it continues without the government doing anything. My worry is that we don't end up as a banana republic where um, warlords, where gang leaders take over our country. Okay. Um, this, question, this question is specifically for you, uh, Lieutenant Commander Imanana. Um, you retired as a Lieutenant Commander equivalent of a major. 12, the 16 persons that were killed in Okwama community, who could say are members of a constituency that you belong to. But as a retired soldier, I, I need you to help me clarify certain things. Because listening to both of you, I think Dumebu Kachuku has even shown more empathy for the soldiers that lost their lives than you, a retired uh, soldier. One of the things you have said there is about rules of engagement, which means that in your view, the soldiers who went on that peace mission violated the rules of engagement in their area of responsibility, what the military refers to as AOR. I need you to help me clarify that. That's one. The other thing, considering the fact that those people who died, they are human beings. Their wives have been turned into widows. Their children have been turned into orphans. Is it part of uh, what you call rules of engagement in military civil relations for soldiers to be slaughtered, to be beheaded, to be dismembered? That's one. Number two, you raised a point that I consider divisive, and I would like you to clarify that. You said, oh, if it was in uh, the north where soldiers were killed, uh, uh, there would be no reprisal action and all of that. Well, I'll draw your attention to Zaki Biam. October 12, 2001, when 19 soldiers were killed in Zakibiam community. You may say that's middle belt, okay? There was also reprisal action. I would have thought that as a retired uh, officer, you should be pushing for unity and how peace uh, can be pursued rather than saying soldiers kill, soldiers kill. Are you speaking out of emotions rather than as a statesman who wants unity. I just need clarification on those two scores. Not, not at all, uh, Dr. Ruben, uh, not at all. I answered that rules of engagement based on a uh, kind of uh, question asked by Mobile. She said, what is the rules of engagement? I now said, even if there are rules of engagement, 25 years after or the invasion, those rules should be reviewed to accommodate both sides. That is my argument. I'm not saying, I'm a military man and I'm, I've, I'm feeling for the death of those uh, military officers and the men, because for sure they have gone through trainings and they have done a lot. Federal government has spent so much money in bringing them up to this, this level. Now they are being killed by non-actors. They are not even dying in war front, coming to die in the hands of youths or machineries that are not even known. So I'm not happy about it, for sure. 
maybe I'm getting emotional because of what happened in my community and there was serious problem after that happening. But for sure, my sympathy goes with the family, even till now. It goes with the family and Nigerian nation. I mourn with them too because this loss cannot be replaced. I am conscious of that. But what I'm saying is that whatever it is, when we, that is why I say I advise both sides. The community should also help the military to fish out the boys if they are from their place. Like in OD, it was only one person that was from our place. And after when the going became tougher than them, they all vanished. Community cannot go out and look for them in Lagos. The OD one was in Lagos. How could they go to Lagos to fish out that young man? No way. Finally, the military dealt with the situation on their own. So that was why I now said, the communities should not be brought down because of the offense of some youths. It should be treated in a way that the loss should not be too massive. Let them fish out the, the killers as directed by Mr. President. That is why my take on the matter. I'm not supporting what happened. Nobody with his same mind will support what happened. That is, why, that is my, my conclusion on this matter. I'm not happy at all. But the second query that I raised about your point that if this had uh, yes. happened in the north, nobody, there will be no reprisal. Uh, okay, okay. Because I had you no, making no, that point. Not, I said, not not. I said, I said, yes, I said, southeast, the killings are going on in ev almost every zone in the country. But whenever it is south, south, reprisal comes fast. That is my saying. Even some other, not only war front, like my colleague there said, that is theater of war. So whoever that is killed is theater of war. Yes, I agreed. But it's not at all cases that theater of war kill uh, our soldiers. Some community too sometimes kill these people. And uh, the reporting aspect of what I, I told you earlier on, if these people come, they come with arms and they, they control the community. The community is under control. So they are scared. So we must learn how to enter, infiltrate them. Surveillance means go and infiltrate them in our likes. Don't go there with uniform when you are going for surveillance. Go with Mufti, and if you get this into the post, go with Mufti and follow the people and cohabit with them. You'll be able to get all the facts you need and prosecute whatever you want to prosecute so that both sides will not, will not lose. Army will not lose. The communities will not lose. That is what I'm saying, and that is what I'm preaching too. Oh. All right, Dumebi, I now come to you. Where do we go from here? Because when you have a situation where the military is being called in on a peacekeeping mission, it means that it's a worst case scenario. Where, how do we move forward from this? You've already painted a picture of, uh, you know, the dynamics that are at play, some of the things that are covert, uh, you know, some of the things that can't even be discussed, of course, you know, openly because of their sensitivity. But how do we now move forward if this is what happens when the military comes in? How do we prefer a solution to this situation? I, I, um, I think government should respond in a timely manner to communal uh, clashes. I think uh, when there are disputes that government should uh, resolve the disputes immediately. I don't think that government should wait for, um, for injustice inequity, inequality to continue to pervade in a particular situation until people are pushed to the wall and say enough is enough. You know what, as they say, all die and I die and we'll do whatever it takes. You know, government should not allow that. Government should be a big brother to all and resolve all disputes. And when there are criminal elements in a dispute, government, governments must ensure that these people are brought to book. Because when we look back, when we look back, in history and see that nobody has really been brought to book in communal clashes when people have been killed. People grew up without father, mother, uncle, auntie, sister. And they said nobody was brought to book. People would just say, what kind of country is this? Maybe I should be on the other side also, right? We must ensure that people are brought to book anytime this happens, which is why I am speaking right now and I'm saying when there's an alleged mention of someone consistently who has been killing soldiers in the last five, six, seven years, this particular um, uh, endurance has allegedly have been mentioned in this matter and nothing has been done. 
nothing has been done when this same criminal walked into government houses. Nothing has been done. How can a state governor openly embrace a known criminal who has been known to have killed soldiers who is wanted? And we expect to have equity, justice in society? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So we continue to perpetrate fraud at all levels in society. We continue to criminalize our society. We continue to ensure that our society will not thrive as long as there is injustice in society. We must hold all these people accountable. Government must be held accountable. Why has government failed to resolve this issue for decades? As at 1945, there was a judgment when uh, 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 Akubene community who, who brought these people in there went to court. There was a judgment then. So this matter has been going on up to 1945. Why are we still speaking about this in the year 2024? Well, on people that were note, killed before this. On that note, well, we pray that may the souls of the departed uh, gallant soldiers rest in peace and all the other persons who have lost their lives in the course of this land dispute between the people of Ukwama and uh, Okoloba. We want to thank you very much, Mr. Dumebi Kachiku, and also Lieutenant Commander Kukui Manana uh, retired. Thank you very much for joining us.